Sarah Badwi here from Horse Racing Nation. Pleased to be joined by Andy Serling, Naira analyst, Fox show host, and also uh, Jeopardy wagering critic. How are you doing tonight, Andy? <laughs> right. yeah, unfortunately, that, that guy who keeps winning is so good. He keeps doubling everybody's scores, though. But yesterday, there was like a statistics professor, and he kind of bet stupidly. Yeah. If only they took your wagering advice, which I'm hopeful that uh, some that watch this video will do and that will it will help them cash a couple of tickets on Saturday. Great card of racing on Saturday at Belmont at the Big A. And of course, there's a couple of Breeders' Cup winning your in races. There's a couple of other stakes races going on. We're going to mainly focus on the graded stakes races later on in the card. But there is a pick six carryover into tomorrow's card. Is there any horse that you can't leave off your tickets for that carryover sequence? Um, I don't know. You, you can remind me this and I can remember that I actually didn't even finish all my picks for <laughs> tomorrow. I thought I did. I think I finished Saturdays. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I don't know. It starts in the fourth race. I'm kind of excited to see Margaret's segmentation back in the last race. And I assume she'll be tough to beat. I thought only she and and uh, Diamond Hands were serious contenders in there. I suppose Parnak's not impossible. Um, I thought the eighth race was tough. So I never picked. I'm going to bet a few dollars on Ice Princess. I, I like punishing myself and, and using her and losing money with her. I'm going to use her and Runaway Rumor mostly in the, in the, in the stake, the seventh sixth race looked really hard it seems like is it me or do a lot of these two-year-old maiden races on the turf does it seem like the the logical horses get hampered on the also eligibles race after race like it's sort of weird how that happens yeah now, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't love anybody tomorrow um in the sequence but it it seems sort of logical but i think it seemed kind of log maybe a little more logical today i played a pick five i had one winner in the five <laughs> sequence it was the biggest prize <laughs> i don't know i didn't play that much <laughs> so. so you're advertising yourself really well for <laughs> right, for, right exactly for saturday the i did bad see ice princess. And bad better the yeah yeah um, i did see right. ice princess and i thought of you because i know that you like that horse and that she keeps wasting your money um there's a couple of really unlucky on turf yeah. five minutes that's my story and i'm sticking with it Whatever you have to keep saying. I uh, got really unlucky the other day, Master of the Tunes. Uh, I know. And I'm so glad that I missed it because it's gotten so bad that the connections have actually reached out to me and keep like telling me sorry that she's not winning because they know that I keep betting her. And I'm like, yikes. But They're really nice. I, I saw them. I felt bad for them after the race because she should have won. It wasn't really Dylan's fault. She just got the wrong post kind of. And he, he did the right thing, but she ended up moving a little soon. The winner got yeah. such a perfect rep trip. She also just doesn't win. So there's that too. Um, but we'll get started here. Saturday's weather forecast. It's looking a little rainy, right. murky, kind of <laughs> gloomy. Um, do you change your handicapping approach when you look at weather like this? Do you kind of just go through races like you normally would? What's the process? Yeah, I don't, I don't really worry much about wet tracks because there's so much randomness to them and, and, and everybody jumps on horses that have won races on wet tracks. So the tendency there, any value there might be is, is usurped by that. So no, I don't, I don't really believe in that stuff. I think it's, it's a lot of hooey horses run well on wet tracks, sometimes run well on dry tracks. I don't really know. You know, unfortunately um, it would be really, first of all, the, that turf sprint came up really good on Saturday. So it would really, suck if we lost that on the turf and, and it's very hard to lose a race like the miss grillo and the pilgrim on sunday because there's so few qualifying races sort of for the breeders cup philly the two-year-old male and female turf races that you feel like we're better off canceling them and running them sometime we can it's tough for the connections they're trying to get into those races um so uh, you know we'll hope for the best i mean it seems to be a bit fluid so who knows maybe it won't be as bad as, as possible maybe you know Two days ago, it wasn't supposed to rain at all. So who knows? And right. Uh, yeah. I kind uh, of approach it. Uh, I kind of approach it and just pretend that everything's going to be perfect sunny weather. And then the day comes and I adjust afterwards because that's how I am. But I'm hoping that those turf races do stay on the grass because I think that they're both uh, pretty cool races and a race that seems pretty straightforward to start us off. It is the Woodward now going to be 
at Aqueduct, it's been at Belmont, it's been at Saratoga. And whenever I think of this race, I just think of Rachel Alexandra's Woodward because that's a replay that I've watched 300 times over. And were you there and what was that like in person? Oh, that was an amazing day. Yeah, that was that's probably the most amazing um, day I've sort of ever been in a racetrack, the most amazing race because it was this incredibly beautiful um, sort of late summer type day. And it was like 80 degrees out, but, you know, really not hot, you know, and, and, and I think normally we're getting crowds less than 20,000 on that Saturday. We, we just, we hadn't raced through Labor Day that long. And I think it was about the fourth or fifth year the Woodward was there. And so it hadn't been such a popular day. I think a lot of people, you know, it's more local and to have 30,000 people that day. And they were sort of all there to see her. And then it was the most traumatic of races. And um, I thought Tom Durkin's call was, was, was incredible for that race too. You know, it, it really showed Tom and all his powers when, when they turned for home and he said, you know, the Phillies in front, but a dramatic stretch drive awaits because Tom had an understanding of racing that a lot of people don't. And he knew that, you know, I think the, the layman might look at that and say, oh, you know, Rachel Alexander's in front, she's going to win. And he understood that what she had been through to get there. And uh, I thought that just had everything and the place was just shaking with a genuine excitement and love for her and the race and had everything that day. So yeah, that was a, that was a magical day. That's the kind of day as a racing fan. If you weren't there, if you could get in a time machine, you'd want to be there. Um, though I think the most famous Woodward is is probably 1967, when uh, Damascus Damascus Buck Pastor and Dr. Fager all met at Aqueduct. So you know, even though it's come full circle and we're back at Aqueduct, the Woodward's story of history really very much goes through um, through Aqueduct. That's a fun fact to note and. The thing about Rachel, I mean, there's a picture of that race on my wall at home. That's a, it's, I mean, it's an iconic race and, you know, my lifetime, at least following the sport, obviously so many before that, but with a horse like her, she was one to four life is good. We're looking at one to nine morning line. Do you think that he's going to end up paying less than she did to win this race? If, if you're under the impression that he does win. She had a real challenge out of her. You know, she, those horses weren't that bad. And they came at her in waves. And I don't think it was surprising because she had a real target on her back and there were speed horses in there. And it never projected to be easy for her. Um, whereas even though, you know, her figures were, were stronger and stuff, life is good is scared away any serious competition in here, to be fair. And I, I don't want to knock the horses in here and keep me in mind. It's okay. And law professors, that one good race in California and formative kind of a funny horse, but the, the, the horses that might've been a competition for, for him that are running, they're running out at, at, at Churchill Downs, um, you know, but I get it. I, I, you know, it's hard when you get the stars, it's like Nest is going to run here next Sunday and looking at the, the noms, it's hard to understand who's going to run against her. But I get it. Um, I get them passing up. And I think it's, you have to ask yourself, do you like getting the stars? You know, I feel lucky that we've seen, this will be the fifth time we've seen Life is Good Run. And I'm guessing that in the Breeders' Cup will probably be his final start. So I feel lucky that we got to see him run here. I, I loved it when Bob Baffert had him. And so, you know, Bob's misfortune was, was Todd Fletcher and frankly, people at Naira's um, good fortune. We got to see him run. And he's really a terrific horse. So... I, I don't see him losing this race and he'll pay a very short price, but I still, I don't mind seeing, you know, I, you know, I remember races like Seattle slew making his final career start at aqueduct and what a cool event that was winning the Stuyvesant and carried like 134 pounds and won by 10 lengths. You know, the, the memories are of some of these horses. So I think we'll remember life is good running. There are a lot of races to bet on. I don't, I'm not going to sit around and cry that I'm not going to be able to bet and most likely lose money on the Woodward. I'll watch Life is Good and be happy to see him run. Well, I think that's something that's different about certain people in racing is that a lot of them are actually really, truly genuine fans of the sport as well. So getting to see these kind of superstars like Life is Good, Flightline coming up, these aren't the best betting races by any means. It's better to just sit back, appreciate what you have in front of you, and wait until the next race. So is there a horse that you like to finish second that isn't keeping me in mind or not so much? Not really. Maybe law professor has a chance, but no, I, I didn't, I don't think I'd be betting this race other than, you know, like everybody starting out a pick five and singling them. I, there, there's, 
I understand that a lot of people, they plan weekends and their lives don't center around the racetrack like ours. Um, and, and they want to bet all these races and all these things, but we all skip races all the time anyway. So there's people that sit around and complain about the small fields. And don't get me wrong, I'd like to have some bigger competitive fields in a lot of these stakes. And that turf sprint is such a fun race, very tough race, but they're entertaining and they're good handicapping puzzles. But I'm also happy to see the life as goods run. And, and, and so you take the good with the bad. Do you have any speculations on the Breeders' Cup going forward? I feel like you and I share the same sentiment that he kind of has to run in the Classic. There's nothing to prove by running in the Dirt Mile again. And I think that if he does, I don't know where you stand on the flight line versus life is good question, but I think that that's the race that he has to show up in. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, he's, just, he's not running in the mile. Um, that would be waving away a flag. They might as well retire him. And I think if they if they want to retire him instead of facing flight line, I think the narrative will go something like this. We're running, we're running, we're running, we're running. And then the day of the race, he'll come up with a, oh God, he kicked himself in the stall or some foolishness. And they'll 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 proceed like we're gonna run if flight line doesn't run. And I sometimes wonder if a little bit of that's what happened on with, with American Pharaoh. People will not want to face him, though I'm not exactly sure why he was such a tough mountain to climb, but that's another discussion for another time. But um I think if they really don't want to run against flight line, they will proceed as though they're going to, and then they'll find some way out on the day of the race or something when he's going to run. But I don't see why they shouldn't run because I don't think anybody's going to say, you know, I was going to read the life is good, but he got so thoroughly but, trashed by yeah. flight line that I'm no longer interested in sending my mare to him. That seems a little bit ridiculous. And he has so much more to gain than he does to lose. And he's already established himself as a sensational racehorse. He's got speed. He's got stamina. Um, and the other thing is, he's been a fairly sound horse. He had some issues as a three-year-old, but he's he's had a pretty full campaign. And I know he's another into mischief. And I guess we just can't have enough into mischiefs out there. But I don't really yeah. think that a loss in the Breeders' Cup Classic would somehow, you know, submarine his, his, his stallion rights. So he'll still be getting plenty of action. I'm with you there. Um, yeah, another horse that's just excited to see him run. I had the pleasure of seeing him when he returned to run second to Jackie's Warrior on uh, Travers Day that year. And that was a great race to see them kind of battle it out all the way to the wire. And from where I was standing, you couldn't even tell who won. So that was cool to see him in person. And just watching, him, watching him on TV while I had COVID, I could really I could tell him. <laughs> oh, yeah. I always forget that you had COVID during that and you had to miss. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's bad times yeah. but anyway. the next race hopefully <laughs> this one ends up staying on the turf because this is a cool race the miss grill it's with breeders cup winning you're in like we kind of talked about for that breeders cup juvenile phillies turf field of six assembled in here and i mean i'm a big fan of be your best i was a fan of hers on debut when she won at eight to one and then she came back in the pg johnson and she kind of was sitting mid pack and debut in the clear. And I feel like when Jose Ortiz said go, you just really saw her go. And it was not only visually impressive, but she got a 74 buyer for that win. Coming back in the PG Johnson, she is sitting a little bit closer. And I like that she kind of had to wait a little bit behind horses before rallying up the rail. And to me, kind of seeing that professionalism from a two year old with just their second career start, I feel like that kind of says a lot. But this is a tougher group than what she's faced so far. Do you see someone that's kind of a legitimate contender that you want to try to play against her, or are you on the bandwagon as well? Well, I think she's one of the two major contenders here, but you know, it's fair to say that free look um, would have made a lot closer if she'd had a better trip when they met um, in, in be your best debut. Uh, I think that free love got a great trip and a great setup last time, but she did really run well. Um, you know, not to say that be your best had a perfect trip in her debut. She actually had a much tougher trip than she did last time out, but free look didn't particularly break and she does out of position. And I also think she's going to be more forward in this race. So, you know, going ahead and hoping that this race goes off as a turf race, I think that, that, that free look may have a bit of a tactical advantage on be your best. And the interesting things about this race is two of the major contenders near are trained by Jorge Abreu, um, Georgie Spear, excuse me, and Alluring Angel. Learning Angel actually ran pretty well at Kentucky Downs after blowing the break last time. But um, Jorge Abreu um, has a stat that's really kind of troubling in this race. He's one for 45 um, stretching out horses on the turf. 
that one win actually is um, Runaway Rumor. Runaway Rumor, yep. <laughs> and she shouldn't even won. Manone should have won that race. She got a lousy trip. Now, there's probably somewhere in that 44 losses is uh, is a horse that probably should have won that got a little unlucky. But that's a pretty, pretty interesting stat. And when you consider the Georgian Spirit and Alluring Angel are two of the real contenders in this race, that stat changes things because I don't think that Pleasant Packet Passage is nearly good enough to win this race, nor right. do I think I'm just kidding is good enough to win this race. And I think if somebody was going to upset one of the two choices, it would have been one of TT's horses. And they just don't seem particularly um, interesting based on that stat. I mean, I don't want to just toss them on that stat, but I think it is pretty powerful. So I knew you would bring up this stat because actually in Runaway Rumor's second start, when she was stretching out from the six furlongs to the mile, I had bet her in her debut and when she had won, and I was going to bet her back that day. And I was watching Talking Horses that day over a year ago. And I remember you brought this up that it was 0 for 30 something at the time. And I'm glad that I stayed extremely stubborn and still bet her in that race. You're getting but your revenge by bringing it I up am. now, the one, yes, the the one time, the because it's my only time to hold <laughs> on to. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was thinking for a second that I wasn't even in that day. I was going to try to plead that. But I remember that Manon, when she won her debut in this country, I was at Churchill Downs. But so I can't I can't plead that. I can't claim your line. So, yes. Like <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I remembered it. And then I also looked it up before we started talking to make sure that I knew what I was talking about because I didn't want to be wrong about it. Um, but it's my one thing to hold on to that I was right about because there's just hundreds. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, I think these horses can win. I, I particularly think that um, Alluring Angel is dangerous, but I don't know if Fastnet Rock really strikes me as a sire, right? That you're looking to get routers and the more of a sprint sire. I suppose more spirit, who the heck knows what we're going to get from him. This sure. horse is already a bit of an anomaly. I, I don't like horses that close to win turf sprints, though, when they stretch out. Though I think the two-year-old stretching out out of sprints are more likely to do it than just the horses are established sprinters i don't think they're impossible and i wouldn't you know i wouldn't i would never they're going to be decent enough prices that if you like them you should bet them but i think it is an interesting stat to bring up but it is particularly interesting in this case because tt has two in here and they're both actual contenders Right. I think that Alluring Angel, much more a valid contender than the one Georgie Spirit. I think the one seems to have a much more sprinty pedigree on the damn side, at least. Alluring Angel, you mentioned that trouble that she had last time where Dance Macabre run. I feel like she was best in there. The thing about that race that makes me at least look at her a little bit is, wasn't it Craig Milkowski that kind of tweeted out that all the races at Kentucky Downs are a little bit longer than they actually say that they are? Right. But so what is it? Six and three quarters for a line? Yeah, it's yeah. actually almost as much as a half of for a long. Yeah. What happens at Kentucky Downs doesn't really. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Um, world. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like I'm not even sure it really exists until I'm actually there physically. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure it's just some sort of like, you know, magical. Uh, uh, right. Right. I'm having an yeah. acid flashback or something <laughs> when I put on Kentucky Downs. Um, yeah, so I don't think it makes up the difference on her to actually have qualified to have gone a route of ground or anything close to it, but at least it's not five and a half furlongs. So that is what it is, but I'll probably just kind of try to survive with be your best, um, free look, obviously a contender obviously can improve, but does she make up what she lost on debut to be your best at nine to five? Do I really want to take that separator? I don't know. Okay. I prefer free to look, but I think it's very close. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get cute. Um, I would use a move. Yeah, it's definitely between those two, at least to me. Um, the next race does feature a horse that I've been wrong about it like 300 times. So um, revenge can be exacted here in the Belmont turf sprint stakes. You have four coming out of the lucky coin, including the top three finishers. Thin White Duke, I feel like he's a horse that in the Troy, when he was third to Golden Pal, I think a lot of people were kind of wondering, like, where did this race come from? Because it was his career best buyer. Fair thing um, to wonder. <laughs> it's a fair thing to wonder. Sure. He's never run anything like that before. Yeah. Right. At least on the figures, like he had never had a race that looked like that. Um, this was one that I had kind of been a fan of for his career. I'm not going to pretend that I had him that day, um, especially not uh, expecting him to run a figure like that. Um, but I feel like he's a horse that's in really good form right now. At least he did come back to win. Um, I did pick him that day, thankfully, not quite at 30 to one, then you're getting four, but I feel like dancing buck is another horse that's just in really good form right now. Mm -hmm. Um, who I've tried to beat a couple of times and he did have those two wins. Um, 
two back and three back. And then the horse that I keep losing money on, that's kind of like my personal pet is Fauci because he just doesn't win. And I've been chasing this horse for over a year. The only difference in here is that he's 15 to one instead of the three to one, four to one range. I feel like I have to include him underneath because that's what he does. He finishes second and third, but he doesn't win. Poor Dr. Fauci. I know. All he does is try to help people. Never gets the job. I did more to advance um, and help AIDS patients than any public official ever. Um, And he gets lambasted by the by the right for trying to help people. Um, So I'll always like Fauci. Um, This is my political statement for the entire day. Um, (laughs) All true, though. Uh, Right. right. I I get it. I get it. You know, he's got those six seconds and five thirds and only the two wins. And he is a hard trier. And the, the interesting thing about this race is. There's no stick out. There's nobody in here where you look at this race and you say, this is the horse to be, you know, because it just isn't right. I mean, I guess Arzak ran that really good race at, at Woodbine three starts back. And he's sort of been suboptimal since those that race. But somewhere he's got that race. Um, I think yes and yes is a horse that, that has a chance in this race. I'm actually very interested in him. To be honest, I haven't made final picks for this race yet. I absolutely think Thin White Duke can win. And I think Thin White Duke, it is reasonable to ask, has he done his best running in Saratoga? That's fair. He'd be a horse that in his career has been best up there. And it's funny with him because when he won going long, they did a real shot. He paid 30 to one that day. And it's, you know, Dave Donk, who's taken over the training. And he's done so well with this horse in yes and yes. And he took over for Phil, from Phil Gleaves, for Phil Gleaves. Um, Dave said, because my friend Steve Chris, you know, is part owner of this horse. And he, you know, Dave said, I think this horse wants to go long. And I don't think he ran badly in subsequent starts going long, but then the opportunity came back and the race there, oh, it turned him back. I don't think they had any great illusions. And then he ran so unbelievably well in all those races that they kept running short. But Dave was the one who initially wanted to stretch out and he wasn't wrong about it. I think he's just kind of a neat horse, but I do worry a little bit that those very best efforts came in Saratoga. On the other hand, maybe he's finally healthy and he's just running well now. So he certainly can win this race. I get what you're saying about Fauci. I won't be shocked and gets a piece. I think Scuttlebuzz is a horse that's worth a little bit of a look in this race. You know, he he is a six for a long horse and he kind of lost his way, right? You look what happened. He ran so well in that seven for a long race and then he ran the, the, the Casa Creed race and he was wide in there and just kind of out of position the whole way. Then they tried a mile. Well, he's not winning a two turn mile race of any kind of caliber, if not any race. And then he caught an off the turf race. I think Scuttlebuzz is a very dangerous horse in here. I, I don't love chewing gum. He might be sort of past his expiration date, but he has back races that can certainly win this race. So I'm probably looking more at great horses like Scuttlebuzz and even yes and yes is the ones I like the most in here. I think they'll be decent prices. I won't be surprised if chewing gum runs well. I won't be surprised if if our Ar- Zach runs well. But this is a this is a very very hard race because so I don't feel it's possible to point your finger and say this is the horse to beat because I don't know who the horse. I actually don't know who the horse to beat is. Yeah, and I think the morning line kind of reflects that. I mean, this is a very wide open board, at least to start. And I think that it might stay that way. And I think even the horse on the rail, Noble Emotion, I don't think he's impossible either. 20 to 1 showed that he can actually stalk and win last time out. But uh, I would say, like, I would only want him to really be on the lead because I don't know if there's a clear pace setter in here. So with Arzak, I feel like, yeah, I, I understand, but those Woodbine races, I feel like he's kind of, maybe he's the Woodbine specialist because he has not run quite as well over here. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, even seven cents now, Brad Cox to the Morley barn. I really didn't like him last time. He was really tailing off into absolutely nowhere. Uh, but uh, I mean, I don't know. Tom Morley has won with this first off the claim move. Obviously this is a much tougher group. So I, yeah, nobody would really, really be, out of the realm of making a case for in here. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree. You know, I always wanted value prop to get into a, a six furlong race where he got a little bit of pace. There isn't a ton of pace here. It should be some, but I'm not taking him for the new connections. I'm not even familiar with this trainer at all from Chad. And it's felt like his form was declining anyway. Noble Emotion, you're right. It's funny with Jose Ortiz. I bet him last time. I thought he'd be the speed. And I watched the race. Actually, I watched the race with my friend Seth Carmen. And I was cursing Jose when he took him back in the race and then he won. And, and Seth said, you owe Jose an apology. <laughs> so I went and saw him and I, I was joking about it with him. And he said, and he made a very good point. He said, I, I'm not sure I was going to be able to rate and win, but I knew, I think maybe uh, Jose Lascano maybe was riding the horse that went after him. It, uh, I don't remember who it was, but he said, I, I wasn't going to win. That horse was not going to let me go. 
So I could either persevere and get buried by that horse or take a shot and try to sit the pocket. And he's right. He wouldn't have beaten Comedy Town. But one thing that's fine to remember is that Casadera should have won that race. Yeah. I Casadera first on the truck are completely left in there. Yep. And he actually should have won the race. But I, I know, I don't disagree. Noble emotions, at least in decent form. And the other thing is, see, he's got to go here. And I'm not sure how much speed there is. And what if he just goes to the rail and, and nobody really goes? You know, Trevor's going to go. So I'm I'm not going to knock any selection in this race as of now. I, I, I really think that there's a case to be made for just about anybody. This is a super race. And it would be really a shame if we lose it because of the rain. Agree completely. Um, speaking of, Horses that kind of would excel in a bit of an off track. Are you are you sad to not see Fort or Forte in the champagne that he's passing this race up? Well, I mean, I got the money with him, so he owes me nothing. <laughs> um, I, I don't under the, the story sounds a little weird to me, to be honest, because Todd Fletcher said he was running. Mm -hmm. And then he doesn't show up in the entries. And I guess he could run next week at Keeneland. But don't they have Lost Ark for Keeneland already? So it, my, these are the kind of things at the racetrack that make you go, huh? And you wonder. And I hope I see him. I think Forte is terrific. And, and I, you know, I think he's a. Uh, obviously, Bob Baffert's pretty strong in California, though. Are you surprised to see that that speedboat horse or something enter in the turf? I don't know if you noticed that at Santa Anita. That horse got a 104 buyer first time on the turf. Um, he doesn't really have, I mean, he's a pioneer of the Nile broodmare, but uh, I guess they must feel he can't go long. And so they'll take a shot in the turf and see him run in the juvenile turf sprint. But, um, you know, it is interesting that he's not in there, but maybe he makes it a better betting race because I, I do like a horse in this race, but I'll let you tell us what you think. Oh, I reveal my, secrets. My, okay. My, yeah, big secrets. <laughs> I'm a man of, of, of no secrets whatsoever. For about two more minutes. Um, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Verifying as the nine to five favorite. I love David. You love David. I don't totally get this horse as the nine to five morning line favorite. I, I don't know. either. I don't either. Um, I respect David's opinion. I do too. Deal. And, you know, it's funny. I talked a little bit about him with David. We were texting about him. I don't like him in here. Um, and he said, I get it. Cause I think the fig is, is total. I don't trust that thing. It was like, was he really worked hard were, to get it. But the second horse was 16 points lower. The third horse was 12 points lower. Yeah. It was the first race that day. I have no doubt the number works. I, I have full confidence in, in buyer and then making those numbers. Sure. But I just, I wonder if one of those first race in isolation where that's not going to prove right. And I'm just not overly confident about this horse. I could see it being favored because I think a lot of people are tiring a little of golf court. And have to wonder if he can really thrive at the distance. Right. No, I'm with you there. But I was going to ask, like, is this horse working really well? Like, what's the buzz? But I'm glad that you kind of see it the no, same way I do, at least to be a little dubious of the fact that this one is that short of a price early on. But the horse that I like in here is actually the two top recruit five to one morning line. I think that he could kind of fall through the cracks a little bit as far as the wagering action, because I feel as though they're going to look at Ellis park and be like, meh, whatever. Um, however, in that race, it was at seven furlongs and he did win just barely over curly Jack, who then come back, came back to win the Iroquois over the two heavy favorites in there, Damon's mound and echo again. And I like in there that, that he kind of fought for it. Like, I really feel as though you can't teach that tenacity to a horse to keep digging in, at least on the rail. And that was only his third career start as well. If you go back to back, he was against Tyler's tribe, who is four for four. And I, honestly, probably one of the best juveniles that we have right now, at least, you know, <laughs> yeah, I will I, it. right. Um, yeah. Wildly just running up the score. Where is he? Why are we going to see him and get the big time? Right. I mean, like, what's the next spot for him? Because I feel like he kind of has, he should go to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. We'll see if they actually do. Um, but now I read gets aboard and I just, I'm tired of golf support myself. I really don't like this favorite. I feel like you do have to include on Yamaha Frenze, especially if there is this weather, because he does have those two wins on an off track. I know Are they that better than his dry track race, really? I mean, I don't know, but this, is this field better than that field? Yes. You think so? Against the field he ran with last time? Yeah, he did a terrible. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, two back. I, I, um, yeah, I don't know. Is Great Navigator run back? Did he run the sapling maybe and lose to Lost Ark? Um, that sounds familiar. Most strike ran poorly in the hopeful. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I think he's fine. I don't like him. I, I don't, 
Um, I know his half brother won this race and beat Good Magic, and I'm still annoyed about it. But um, I like the same horse as you. Uh, oh, okay. You know, I yeah. don't love that when Tom Source Curly Jack won it, Keaton Churchill he ran eight buyer points lower. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a good field. The third horse ran 10 buyer points better in a win. The fourth horse ran like 32 points faster at Churchill the next time it ran. So I think there's a real argument. He comes out of a legit race and I don't got a big number. And I felt like you did that, that they're going to look at him and think, and this maybe he doesn't class up to them. I don't know what's so classy about these horses. Gulfport has lost both times when he faced decent horses and not sure he gets better with distance and blading sevens. The best thing to say about him is there seems to be pace in here and maybe the race falls apart and he gets lucky, but has he really done anything to lose? I know that first race came up fast. The second place finisher won big the next time, but I don't know. I, 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 I'm kind of circumspect of him. Champions drive. I think dream is tra- training well for Danny Gargan, but that wasn't a particularly fast race. Um, Verifying is going to beat me. Maybe he will. And I, I didn't like Andiamo about Firenze. I, I, I mean, I hear you with the wet track. But I think a lot of people are going to think that. And, you know, I think he's a perfect example of a horse that I don't think he really ran any better in the wet tracks. They were just easier spots. He was also on a track that was very kind inside speed the day he won first time out. I thought it worked in his favor. So I wasn't a huge fan. He's also speed. I mean, is he going to outrun the Verifyings and Champions Dreams of the world? Maybe he will. And if he does, maybe he gets loose. But I'm not a big fan. I, I like top recruit like you do. I think he's just very logical. And I don't think four to one to five to one is a bad price on him at all. And I think that you'll at least get something because he's not going to be the first choice or the second choice. So Except I rats on him. Well, but I mean, I, they're going to keep betting gold for because he at least keeps showing up. And I guess they're going to bet verifying as well. He does have the big pedigree. It's Brad Cox. I, I I don't they're going to bet him. They're going to bet him. Yeah. That fig is big and, you know, going to see him and they'll say, oh, Jack Christopher won the first race on Travers Day. And last year <laughs> he won the champagne as though that has any. Obviously, it's a lot. Is. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> Good Magic lost, actually, I think the first race on Travers Day. Um, but he was wide against a, a, a good rail that day. And then he ran back in the air and just got beaten by uh, by Frenzy Fire. All right. Well, that covers the stakes races. Appreciate your time as always. I'm glad that we came up with the same horse and the champagne uh, so we can either win or lose together. Always <laughs> nice to yeah, have yeah. a buddy for either activity. <laughs> for misery, right. I, yes. I know a different horse, so maybe increase the chances of one of us could win, but okay. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't need felt company. I imagine I have company losing together, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, don't we all always, uh, except for the random occasional person that will tell you that they had the winner after the race occurs, of course. Yeah, I get, I, well, I get a lot of um, how dumb I am when I, I, somebody criticized me because that, I, I didn't like the ridiculous note a horse that won the state today. I don't know. Oh, the like it or, and then I just commented how it was sort of odd, all the money that the eventual winner of the next race was taking and how her recent form was terrible. And so some clown um, attacked me for, 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 for dismissing these two winners. And I'm thinking, did you have them? (laughs) Yeah. The $50 winner and the $24 winner. Right. You mean the $600 parlay? Right. Exactly. (laughs) It seemed like an underlay by the way. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people felt like I did. They just aren't, they don't have the pleasure of being on TV and they're they're not, or maybe they're more afraid to voice their opinions. Of course, until after, um, but (laughs) after, (laughs) after, But looking forward to really exciting weekend, of course, Breeders' Cup as well. And you'll be there this year, correct? I am planning to go. I haven't been to Keeneland since uh, 15. Last time I was there, I had a huge fight with our producer um, because he told me that American Pharaoh couldn't lose the Derby. And I think I was a Derby or Triple Crown. He made some bet with me and he won a bunch of money for me. I wanted to pay him in dimes, but Simon Bray was encouraging me to pay him in dimes, but I, I paid him in real <laughs> paper money <laughs> well a good fact to know is that you are true to your word and that you pay your debts so um you pay my debts. <laughs> we'll leave it with that but thank you again and good luck to everybody this weekend thanks for having me on